I strongly thought this tournament would have been safer without the fans, hence I didn't promote it, but now it's over, I'm happy to resume reporting. I've read all 15 days worth of newspaper reports, so let me tell you what they said, starting with the final day interviews. As you've doubtless heard, it was the perfect story for the internet age. Ex-title winner and Ozeki Terunofuji falling all the way to the 48th rank of Division 5, then bouncing back to Division 1 and collecting the cup again on his first go. No, it's never been done before. For a long time, ex Ozeki were told to retire before dropping into Division 2 even. But times are changing, and today's win can be considered the crowning achievement thus far of sumo sports science. Battling two busted knees, hepatitis C, and diabetes, among other problems, Teranofuji several times requested to retire, only for his coach Isegahama to say, You can definitely make it back to Division 1. Take as much time as you need, a year or more if you have to. I don't care how low you fall, just make sure your body completely heals before you come back. That convinced Teranofuji to have the double knee operation in June 2018 and take the next nine months off too. That appears to have become his career turning point. And given the big man's success since then, Isegahama's advice has the potential to transform professional sumo and prolong dozens of careers. It will be very interesting to see if other coaches take a similar approach. Here are the other reasons why Teranofuji's win today was so significant. Firstly, he is the first demoted Ozeki to win the title since Kaiketsu in 1976, Kaiketsu being the only other man to do it. Secondly, it's only the third time in history that a man on the bottom rung of Division 1 has won the title, but as you know, the second man to do it this year. No wonder the commentators are mocking the rankings chart. He's only the eighth person in history to win the title twice at the rank of Sekiwake or lower, today's opponent Mitake Umi being the seventh, by the way. It's the first time we've had two Maegashida level title winners in the same year since Takahanada and Mitoi Zumi in 1992. And did you notice how he looked up to his previous title winner's portrait just after winning today? His triumph this afternoon comes five years and two months and 30 tournaments after his first championship, making it the second longest gap between titles won. Second to the 43 tournament gap between Kotonishki's first and second titles in the 1990s, by the way. Speaking to NHK afterwards, Teranofuji said, So much has happened, and it's been a roller coaster ride, but I always believed the day with me here smiling like this would come. Good things come to those who give it absolutely everything they've got. You've just got to keep believing in what you've done thus far. The first time I won the title five years ago, I was just young and bouncing with energy. But this time, I was more careful and focusing on one thing at a time. That's the difference, and that's why I'm standing here smiling now. And can I also extend special thanks to Terutsuyoshi, who used to be my attendant at one point. He told me on day 13, make sure to watch me tomorrow, Ozeki, because I'm gonna beat Asanoyama. And he did, and that's why I'm champion. Note how it's sumo tradition for wrestlers to refer to their colleagues by the highest rank they've achieved. Quite touching that, I think. For the record, in a separate interview today, Terutsuyoshi poured out his delight and said, I've helped him win the title, so let's enjoy the celebrations. Terunofuji continued, I was always thinking, how many tournaments will it be until my portrait gets taken down? I wanted to get another one made before that happened. At the moment of victory today, I was just so happy that I lost track of what was what. So much came flooding into my mind and I tried to hold all those emotions down. 
Throughout my tough times, so many people were supporting me, so I just wanted to give something back to them. We're also facing difficult times as a whole now, so I wanted to exemplify bravery and perseverance up there. The most poignant moment of the day saw him collect the title winner's flag from the very coach who told him never to give up. Just over 30 years to the day since that coach's own promotion to Yokozuna. Sumo chairman Hakaku was keen to sing the title winner's praises, saying, I can't imagine what it must have been like for an ex Ozeki to fight in Division 5, but how he's come back from that. He must have had some nerves returning to the top level, but his fighting spirit carried him through. I don't think even he pictured winning the title again this quickly. It's amazing that he wins it on his first tournament back. But he's won a championship before, and you can certainly see why he made Ozeki. However, when asked about Teru's prospects for September, the chairman was more cautious. He'll be much higher up the rankings chart next time, and it'll be difficult for him. He's still concerned about his knees, which have not returned to the condition of old. He'll be hard-pressed to match the feats of this tournament, that's for sure. Maybe so, but Teronofuji's career has been built upon unusual and remarkable events. Due to power-saving measures post-earthquake and tsunami, his unique professional debut came in a very dimly lit Kokugikan in May 2011, under the ring name of Wakamisho. Due to the match-fixing scandal of the time, that meet was not even classed as a tournament, but as a technical evaluation event, the only time that's ever happened. In March 2013, his Magaki stable folded, and he had to transfer to Isegahama, where he became Teronofuji upon reaching Division 2 six months later. He made Division 1 in March 2014, and collected his first cup 14 months later, just 25 tournaments on from his debut. He was the third fastest man in history to do it, behind Takahanada and Asashoryu. That title win earned him promotion to Ozeki, a rank he held despite all those horrible injuries until September 2017. Just 18 months after that and he was halfway down Division 5. But today, 17 months further on, he stands top of the entire sumo pile. He also walks away with the special prizes for outstanding performance and technique, which add another $40,000 to his bank balance. And the question is, at the age of 28, can he still match Kaiketsu by following up his title with a return to Ozeki?